let's look at this uh, numerical which is uh, targeting uh, the computation of the various uh, greeks let's go step by step an at the money european call option on a stock has an exercise date one year away so the time to maturity is one year it's an at the money european call option the strike price is 118.57 so because it is at the money the current stock price is also 118.57 the option is priced at 10 bucks the price of the call option c is 10 the continuously compounded risk free rate of return is 1% per annum now i have to find out the implied volatility within 1% per annum okay we'll try to find out the implied volatility Initially, we can make an assumption, and it can do a trial and error kind of a mechanism. Okay, let me try it out. The current stock price, one hundred and eighteen point five seven. The strike price is also one hundred and eighteen point five seven. The risk-free rate of return is working out uh, to one percent. The volatility initially, let me assume it to somewhere around twenty percent. and uh, i can also take the time to maturity is 1 based on that i can find out the price of the call option probably i, I will use the black scholes option pricing formula where in first we will compute d1 which works out as log s by x plus r plus r Plus sigma squared by two, sigma squared by two times t divided by sigma into square root of t, sigma into square root of t. So this is working out to be my d one, right? This is working out to be my d one. log s by x log s by x so let me try removing these two log s by x plus uh, r plus sigma squared by t into t yeah so this is coming out to d1 then d2 comes out as d1 minus sigma root t so sigma into square root of so d2 is coming out to this then i can take phi of d1 or probably the standard normal distribution value of d1 cumulative uh, standard normal distribution which i can get through the norms dist function here goes with uh, around 0.55 and the same exercise if i am doing with uh, n d2 again a similar kind of a mechanism is going to lead me to this all right so these are nd1 and nd2 based on this i can find out the price of the call option s times nd1 minus the present value of x x by e power rt r t times n d 2 this is going to be the price of the call option almost 9.999 so obviously i can uh, very well uh, say that uh, even if i do a little bit of adjustment to make it very close to 10 all i can look at is i can do a quick uh, goal see kind of stuff where i want to set that particular value to be 10 and i want to change the underlying volatility i don't see a big change at all the volatility is still at 20% only so this numerical is leading me to a computation of implied volatility in the process of 20% okay now that i have uh, around 20% i am able to uh, say that this is the uh, this is the volatility in the process now calculate the corresponding hedging portfolio in shares and cash for 1000 options on the share quoting any results that you use 
Now, thousand options. Now, what is, uh, so if I have to create a hedging portfolio, first of all, I am going with the delta. The delta wise, I need to know the delta of the portfolio. So, del the delta of uh, the option here is ND1. ND1 is the delta of the option, which is 0.559. So, for uh, one single option, the delta is 0.559. So, I am going with 1000 options. So, which means uh, I am expecting the delta of the options position. Delta of the option position, I am actually uh, having it as 1000 times this number. So, my del delta of the option position is 559. So basically, uh, 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 as we are uh, long on it, now if I want to have a portfolio which is uh, a delta neutral kind of a portfolio, now I need to go for, I need to go for those many units of stock to make it portfolio neutral. I have to go for those many units of stock to make it portfolio neutral. So how much is it? 559 559.6177 units of stock needs to be gone with and I'm if I have to find out what is the price that is associated with uh, those many units of stock it is this number multiplied by the current stock price resulting in this much is the price of the, the, the underlying stock that really needs to be gone with. And today, and how much of uh, cash do I really uh, require here? See, when I am creating this kind of a uh, position, Right, I'm uh, going with uh, uh, these many uh, so one month 118.57 year uh, with being the stock price, and I'm having uh, to create a delta hedging position. I'm directly going with these many, and now when I look at the call option, how much did I really spend for the call option? Ten dollars, uh, ten pounds is being spent on one single option. And there are thousands such options that are gone for. So if I had gone long on the call option, now let's see. If I had gone long on the call option, right? If I am gone long on the call option, probably I would have spent ten thousand bucks on purchasing thousand options. But uh, 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 but. It, it has created a delta of plus 559. So I will have to go short on the stock. 559 uh, uh, units of stock. Which would have given me a cash inflow of 66,353.87. So uh, if I have to create an exactly a hedged position. I could have even... Uh, uh, I can even have a cash. I am having an extra cash of the remaining, which is minus 56,353.87. So, a simple, uh, uh, a short position of uh, 559 shares along with a cash position of minus 56,353.87 is creating a perfect hedging position. Right? All right. Now we are also looking at the calculation of the Vega of the call option. Okay, how do I? So Vega is what? What is the percent? I mean, rate of change in the call option premium with respect to the stock price, well, with respect to the volatility. So now we know that the call option premium is S times N D one minus x e per minus r t times n d2. Even going with the garman Kolagan formula, we also know that, we also uh, know that 
S times N dash D1 is same as X e power minus R T times N dash D2. Right? So, what I can very well uh, look at is do, uh, here I could uh, I could very well uh, use up that particular uh, formula uh, where I can substitute one in the form of the other. So this I can take do by do sigma uh, s and d1. So I can take it as s times n dash d1. Right? If I have to differentiate this. If I have to differentiate this with respect to sigma, it becomes S into N dash D1 dou D1 by dou sigma minus Xe power minus RT N dash D2 dou D2 by dou sigma. Now, this entire thing can be taken to be the same. So, all I can get is S N dash D1 times dou d1 by dou sigma minus dou d2 by dou sigma. Now we know that uh, d2 equal to d1 minus sigma root t. So we will take the derivative with respect to sigma on both sides. Dou d1 by dou sigma is dou d2 by dou sigma is equal to dou d1 by dou sigma minus square root of t. So the difference between these two is nothing but square root of t. So, overall comes S n dash D1. So, the vega comes out as S n dash D1 square root of T. S n dash D1 square root of T, which again uh, works out to be as n dash D1 is S into e to the power of minus half D1 squared 1 by square root of 2 pi into square root of t. This comes out to be my vega. So, I can substitute the numbers. So, s, right, vega I can very well compute here. When I am computing the vega, it comes out as s multiplied by square root of t. Okay, this is my square root of t. I am multiplying it e to the power of minus half d1 squared e to the power of minus half d1 squared. This is my d1, d1 squared divided by square root of 2 pi. So overall the vega is working out. Right, I am simplifying the vega to be somewhere around 46.773. The similar kind of a calculation has given me the vega of the option through this mechanism. Either I can remember this formula S n dash T D1 into square root of T or I could have derived through that kind of a mechanism that we have talked about. Price a put on the same stock with the same expiry date and a same and a strike price of 110. Right, same stock, same expiry date, everything remaining the same. Now I want to find the price of the put option. So probably the the expire the, the strike price I am taking for the put option is this much. Rest all remaining the same. So the call is becoming 14.69 now. Right earlier it was 10. Now when I have put it as 110, the call is becoming 14.69, and I can use put call parity now because of the put call parity which we have uh, initially uh, discussed. The difference between the call option premium and the put option premium is S minus Xe power minus RT. So from here I can say put is C minus S plus Xe power minus RT. The same logic if I put now. The price of the put option is the price of the call option minus the spot price plus the present value of the strike price. X e power minus r t. 
So this is giving me that the price of the put option going with the call put parity relationship is somewhere around 5.03. Alright, so this part is also fine. The hedging portfolio of the call option has the same value, same delta and same vega as the option. Right, hedging portfolio of the call option has the same value, same delta and same vega of the option. The delta of the put option is minus 0.29975 and the vega is 39.435. Now from here I really want to find out the hedging portfolio of the call option in terms of this. Now we have uh, some x number of shares, y number of put options, and probably a, a Z number of Z amount of cash to match the Delta and Vega. Now from here we know that okay X number of shares right uh, uh, when we are uh, looking at the X number of shares the Delta is X and when I am uh, looking at uh, Y number of put options the delta of the put option is delta P. So X number of cash does not have a delta. So this should be equal to the delta of the call option. So this is one expression that is coming out. Whatever is the investment that I am putting X number of shares into a share price S. Y number of shares with the put option price P. And uh, uh, Z amount of cash this entire thing should be equal to the price of the call that is 1. Then finally I am looking at the vega also. Vega for an option. Right. So for y number of options I am going for a vega of a put option. Is We know that the vega of the put should be the same as the vega of the call. But yes. Here uh, the put is of a different strike price and call is of a different strike price. So what I can say is y times the vega of the put should be equal to the vega of the call. Now vega of the put we have already uh, got. This is the vega of the put. We have got the vega of the call is around uh, when I have uh, taken 118. We have got the vega of the call is 46.59. The vega of the put is 39.43. So from here I can very well find out what is the value of, I can find out the value of uh, y, how many uh, put options. Right, the vegas wise, the shares don't have a vega, the cash doesn't have a vega. So I can directly uh, find out uh, uh, y purely from vega of the put and vega of the call. We know that the vega of the call is this much. So I can uh, divide this by the vega of the put 39.345. So which will give me a direct uh, value for y. So y is known from this equation directly. How much that I have to invest in the put option. So I'm uh, I'm putting uh, I'm by I'm going for 1.18 uh, puts, fair enough. Then from here I can find out my x, which is uh, the number of shares that I have to go with, and from here I can find out what should the amount of cash position. A simplification will give me the overall hedged portfolio in the process. So Greeks and doing the hedging based on the value of the Greeks will be something in this manner, right?